as far as enforcement for this particular bill law becomes, when I go to O'Charlie's and ask for a drink, will they ask for my ID as far well, as both whether I'm legal and then for whether I have a gun or not? Well, first of all, the way both versions of this bill works, no matter what, I believe this is going to always stay in it. Um, an establishment can decide if they even want to do this. They can post a sign that says, no guns. So they are not forced to do this if they don't want to. And there's a lot of misconceptions about this bill. You know, we're not talking about, um, you know, uh, places that are kind of seedy. You know, we're talking about O'Charlie's. And people that have a gun permit, they feel extremely strong that that they have been a law-abiding citizen, they have applied for the permit, they've had a background check, they have taken the, the safety course, they don't break the law, and they are a law-abiding citizen and they should be allowed to have their gun. And that's how we, are, this is where we are with this. So um, I don't believe that's how that would work. In, in an answer to your question, I don't think they're gonna run around the restaurant and card people. I don't think that's how it's gonna work well, I was just wondering how, how the enforcement mm -hmm. of that would actually play out. And that was, that was kind of what I was curious with. Mm -hmm. um, all right, well, let's segue from there uh, to another piece of gun legislation. Um, another area that we keep hearing about uh, is the right to carry guns in state parks. And this was approved uh, by the House, but is still in committee in the yes. Senate. Mm -hmm. um, like most of the gun legislation, this is still pretty controversial. It is, and again, I go back to what the folks that are legal uh, gun permit you know, carry holders, what, how they feel. They feel like they are not breaking the law, they've been checked out, they uh, abide by the law, and why shouldn't they carry their gun? Now, with the state parks, you know, some state parks are acres and acres and acres and acres of land. And people go hiking, they go camping, they do all these different things, and they just feel like they're safer if they have their gun. I personally have concerns about the, um, there's another bill that's sponsored actually by a Democrat. This is a bipartisan effort too, by the way, I know a lot of people think this is all the legislature's done is pass gun bills, or maybe all that the Republicans have done, but I can tell you this has been a bipartisan um, event. Um, the bill that would allow guns in municipal parks, that's actually sponsored by a Democrat. And there's been a lot of conversation, actually there's been more conversation about that bill than there has been about this, the bill about state parks. Um, you know, because a lot of things go on in a municipal park that don't go on in a state park to, okay. to think about. And um, we've had a lot of conversations about that bill, about posting, whether you can have a gun or not, who gets to post it, does the city get to opt out, do they not get to opt out, do they get to opt in, do they opt, you know, there's all this confusion. So, but there are a lot of things that go on in a municipal park, like, you know, ball games, and I know in Hendersonville, the high schools use the city parks, uh, and I've seen people get upset at a ball game, and um, there's there's some concern about that. So the sponsor of the bill and the legislature, we've tried to work around some of those issues, but um, the state park, that doesn't bother me at all, but I will tell you, I do have some reservations about the municipal parks. All right. Well, let me, uh, I guess, kind of keep playing with this idea here just a little bit. Um, there is a, a bill now uh, to close public access to the names of people with state-issued gun permits, and that's proceeding through the legislature now. Do you agree with this legislation? Well, I have to tell you, this is another uh, event that I have heard so much about from my constituents. The Memphis Commercial Appeal opened that up on their on the internet, the Tennessean did it a couple of years ago, and that really upsets people that you can just go to this website and see if you own a gun or not. And you know, a lot of people feel like it's not safe. It's not safe um, for the folks that don't have a gun. You know, a, a criminal could go down that list and say, okay, this guy's got a gun. I'm not gonna break into his house, but this guy next door to him doesn't have a gun. I might break into their house. And so gun owners feel very protective about their rights, and they do not like that at all and we hear a great deal about it uh, from them. I wonder if the same logic applies the other way. For instance, as a state employee, mm -hmm. uh, the Tennessean, I guess it was last year, published the database of all the Tennessee Board of Regents employees. Mm -hmm. So if the logic goes that perhaps the gun permit should be closed so, so that a criminal sure. could say he sure. does have a gun and I don't, he could come to my house and say well he makes 
$40,000 a year. I'll skip him. That guy who makes 70000 is a lot more. Should those other kinds of public records well, be closed as well? you know, that's one of the arguments, you know, that we're actually going to close a public record. I mean, because those gun permits are public records. And, you know, we try to pride ourselves on open records. And that is something to think about. I, I know that a couple of years ago we discussed, uh, you know, how law enforcement how, you know, they're public employees, you know, there's a lot of rules and regulations about how their personnel records are dealt with as an open record. So it is something to think about and, and it has been a big conversation, you know, that we're going to close an open record. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you the gun owners, the legal gun owners mm -hmm. are just like those people that want wine in grocery stores, right. we're hearing from them. Hmm. They are making uh, their voice is heard. So apparently I need to write a lot of letters to make... You, to you do. Right. You need to get everybody behind you. Uh, you've kind of commented on this a little bit already, but I want to, just for the record, to kind of get your take on this officially, I suppose. Um, former Speaker Jim, uh, Jimmy Nafee mm -hmm. uh, recently commented that the House is spending 70% of its time on gun bills and 30% on personal orders. Would you say that this is accurate? Well, I can tell you, first of all, that, that Speaker Emeritus Nafee, he has, uh, while I know that he has a gun permit and he's a legal gun owner, mm -hmm. uh, I do know that he has not been uh, as friendly uh, to gun bills as uh, people had wished. So now that the Republicans have, um, um, I don't want to really call it a majority, but somewhat of a majority. Um, these gun bills have just been coming out that have been bottled up for years. And like I said, they're bipartisan. They are bipartisan in every way. There are just as many Democrats sponsoring gun bills as there are Republicans. So, you know, we have focused some on that. Part of the reason, though, is the budget was so late coming to us. You know, we didn't get the budget from the governor, and it's not his fault, but we didn't get it until, I think, March 30th. You know, we were waiting to hear about the stimulus package. So, you know, we started moving bills that uh, didn't have a lot of fiscal notes because, you know, we were up there. And they do get a lot of publicity. Those gun bills mm -hmm. get a lot of publicity. So I think it appears that that's all we've worked on. I know that I think this is the busiest I've ever been in my life uh, in session um, because I have a lot of bills that are moving and um, I just, you know, time's just flying by for me. But I do think we have focused on other things besides, gun, besides guns. Now, the personal orders, I agree with, with Speaker Emeritus Nafee. We have spent way too much time on personal orders. Everybody wants to bring somebody down to the legislature to honor them. And we have done a great deal of that. And there's nothing wrong with honoring folks in your district. You know, they've done something wonderful. But we have spent a lot of time. I think we've spent too much time doing that. I agree with them on that one. Well, I can see where you would feel very busy. You've sp sponsored or co-sponsored a great many bills this session. Um, one of them is legislation dealing with sex offenders. Mm -hmm. um, one of the bills that you sponsored redefines indecent exposure, and I believe that recently passed. It did. What, what that bill does, uh, believe it or not, if, if you uh, lured a child into your home and committed uh, the act of indecent exposure for sexual gratification, um, you could be uh, charged with a, a crime. If the child already lived in your home, you could not. So nowadays, you know, we have all types of uh, blended families. We have all types of living arrangements now. And so, you know, there's folks living in your home that um, might not be related to your child. And so, uh, and you didn't lure them there. Your child, the child lives there and this person lives there too. So this would actually um, allow folks that have been committing this crime to actually get in trouble because we haven't been able to uh, do anything to them because they didn't lure the child in mm -hmm. to the house. So that's one of them. It's a little unusual to be passing a bill that crosses into the threshold of someone's home even though it is protecting a minor. Well, we did spend a lot of time, I spent a lot of time on that bill making sure that we did not have a situation like say in a uh, custody battle or a domestic you know, a divorce mm -hmm. where a disgruntled spouse who might still be living in the home with the other spouse could accuse the other one of this act. Mm -hmm. So I had to, I amended the bill to make sure that couldn't happen.